19 minutes before uh, 8 o'clock here on the program. So flowers have for years been admired and used by humans to showcase beauty to their environment. So let us this morning meet Rafael Mulinge, a fervent Kenyan horticulturist who has worked in flower farms for years. He is staff at Kenya's Winchester Farm in Nairobi, one of the country's masters behind the awestruck production. Flowers remain a crown of global sensation, but making them blossom is an uphill task. The process is quite demanding and has to be scientifically modified before exhibiting them at the Bloomy Auditorium. That's why individuals like 45-year-old Joseph Mulinge have surrendered their lives to see such undertakings come to life. Anything about flower growing, I'm very passionate about it, whether it's growing itself, whether it's propagation itself, whether it's quality or post harvest. I really feel this is the thing I should be doing. Raphael works at Mzuri Flowers. Mzuri, Swahili for good, is a group of three farms growing Kenya's main roses. Among the three is Winchester Farms in Nairobi, where Raphael works. The growers use hydroponics, a system of growing plants in gravel or liquid with added nutrients but without soil. Uh, it has its own advantages. Yeah. First of all, you don't expose yourself to soil-borne diseases. You conserve water because you are able to recycle, because you get back about 35 to 40 percent back. And um, you know, this water that is recycled basically is water with fertilizer. So in the palm house, I would say it's the heart of the farm, because this is, you know, from where the crop is supplied with irrigation and at the same time is uh, fed with fertilizers. Raphael studied agriculture at Kenya's Egerton University. After completing his studies, he found a job here and has since sharpened his floriculture skills for 21 years. Sometimes you have uh, good years, sometimes you have very bad years. Because as you know, our marketplace is in um, Europe and the um, revenues depend on the state of the economy of these countries. This is all a business that is affected so much by weather conditions. As I mentioned earlier on, you have temperatures, you've got you know, humidities. It's also a business that requires a lot of water. So a lot of times you're in competition with the general population because we're drawing from what we, what we call the public goods, rivers and lakes. After harvesting, flowers require proper storage and packaging because of their brittle nature. That's where Doreen Chepkorir comes in. Okay, we normally wrap our flowers with this net so that we, we protect the heads from damages. You want it to remain the way it is so that you can keep it for some time. Because you see, the flowers are used for beauty. So when the customer is going to put it in a vase, you want it to just grow naturally, then it blooms beautifully. So you need to now put it in the cold store. Flowers have for years been admired and used by humans to showcase beauty to their environment, source of food and medicine. Many also use flowers as an object of romance, yet others employ them while performing rituals. Wonderful. However, sales in Kenya remain on the decline, a situation widely blamed on a high poverty index. If you consider the low income, you look at their priorities in terms of uh, how do they allocate their money. If you look at the middle income group, they will, most of it will go into food, very basic needs. See, flowers is a luxury good. So the spent on luxury good would be very, 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 very low. Coupled with the culture, then it makes this to be a dream. They will not see flowers as a priority. Their priorities is completely something else.
So it will take us a long way for that culture to build up that uh, we appreciate flowers the way Europeans do. The roses at Mzuri are comprised of a bunch of five breeds. These are amongst Kenya's many varieties that make the country a leading edge in the global markets. According to Kenya Flower Council, 40% of all cut flower imports into the European Union are from Kenya. Other exporters are Holland, United Kingdom, Germany, France and Switzerland. We are a major supplier. In fact, we are the number one supplier to the EU uh, of, of cut roses, so we're very proud of that. Now we're looking to diversify this to other markets. Um, the UK is also very important for us, about 23% of our flowers go there. Japan is key, we are the largest supplier of roses there. Countries is Dubai and the UAE, and now we're looking to see what we can do in China and in America. In good seasons when flower companies export, the revenues are good and such profits also trickle down to the flower farm employees. In um, the flower farming, I mean we always look at achieving targets in terms of, you know, the numbers, which is uh, production figures. If it's quality, getting the right quality that people recognize you as a quality leader in the market. When you feel, you know, when you get this, you feel really good. At the end of the day, if it's end of the month and you see your figures are right, end of the year you see your figures are right. That's very satisfying as a grower. Flowers remain a luxury amid Kenyans despite the easy access to incentives. But with production volumes going up each year, it is hoped that the good tidings abroad will inspire many Kenyans to sooner or later support the flower industry locally.